Hey, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and in this video I'm going to show you about Base64 encoding pictures, both how to encode them and how to decode them. And so, first off, why in the world would you care about this? Well, one thing is often we want to share files, you know, we'll write a script, we want to share files with people, we don't want to have, have to have them download pictures. And this is one way to take your picture and encode it in a way that becomes text. Uh, it's an alpha, I'd say it's readable, but it's of course not really readable to humans, but we'll, we'll see here in a minute what I mean by that. But it makes it where you can store it in a file that's plain text, and that way it can be inside your script, or you can, there's a lot of other benefits to this, but being able to have it as just text allows you to include it in your script instead of having a separate file, which I think is pretty awesome. Let's start off here, let me jump over to my page. Oh, don't forget to like uh, and comment if you know you, you didn't understand something in this video or you want to see more about this kind of stuff. Uh, but please like and subscribe, it helps me a lot. Thank you. Now, back into here. Okay, so I initially found, let's look at this, this base64 function was written by Scan. Now, the thing is, I went and looked at this link, and my version is slightly different, and I can't remember why. I think Maestrith went in and did some tweaking to it, but I honestly don't remember. It was years ago. Uh, but what happened, so so we're not going to go into the how it works. You can see it, it does some stuff with the DLL call uh, and looks at it, whether it's if it's a Unicode or not. And if it is, it does one thing. If it's not, it does another. This is a little text file I have on my computer. And let me show, let me let me find that. Okay, I'm gonna bring over the whole thing here. So this xmis.gif, that's what this file is. Look at it, oh yeah, it's tiny. I'll zoom in, but you get it. It's a tiny little smiley. And that's the file, That's this is the path to it. So we're gonna use this base64 function and we give it the path. So this is very, very simple to use, right? And I'm gonna store it in this text variable. And then we're going to display it in the debug window in site, which is down here. I could put in a message box, but it'd, it'd be pretty ugly. Uh, maybe we'll do that. Yeah, well, let's do both. But after it does that, we'll put it up in a message box so we can see both. So I'm going to hit my hotkey to launch it. Now it goes and reads that file. This is what it converted it to, right? So it took that picture file and converted the binary picture into this alphanumeric encoding, which is base64 encoded, and I just replaced, you know, everything with a certain character, so then it could decode it later. Uh, often, and I don't understand why, maybe make sure there's someone could explain to me, or maybe someone here can comment on the video, as to why in the world it has the um, equals equals at the end, often. It doesn't always, but often it ends in equals equals. Uh, so let's hit OK here, but let me show you here, if we move this over, you can see it a bit better. So here's that text, right? It's the same text. It's just you can get an idea of how long of a string it is, uh, which is a little problematic. I'll, I'll explain why in the, in the second part of this video. But I wanted to first demonstrate just how easy it is to pass a, a file to it. And here I'm using a picture, but I think you could pass a PDF or something else, and it would probably work just as well because it's encoding that file. And um, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to comment this out and that out. And now I'm going to borrow, because I have this down here, and I'll, um, you know, when you go to that URL, you'll get the downloads for all this stuff. Here, let me, let me move this. I'm going to cut it and move it up here. I just didn't want to distract you at the beginning part. So here, we're going to use the second function. Now, this is a function I wrote called encode write read, and we pass it the here I'm using taking advantage of the local path, so I should really pass this full path. But here still we're in that folder anyway, so it's going to use the same file. We're passing it to it, and here's what it does. So it says, okay, let's use this encode write read, read function, which is this one. It jumps in here. Now the file name, if you notice right here, I'm splitting. I use split path command to get the file name. And I'm sorry, that's the the input variable. This is what we pass to it. The O name, I'm saying O is out, out name. The, um, and then here is the out name known extension, right? So I'm storing these two as variables that I can later use. And so this out name no extension comes in very handy. And so right here, I use the any write. And so this any write, it's going to, uh, first, I call that base64 function with the file name, right? So that gets passed through from the beginning. Uh, it I just gave it a generic. Uh, this is the 
oh, sorry, that's the name of the file to store it in. This is the section. If you've worked with any files, I have a video on that somewhere, but they're, they're really cool. And then we're passing this, the name no extension, so it's just going to store it as Xmas uh, inside there. And then after we write it, I'm reading it. Now that I wouldn't use this clearly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably use this this way in a script. I just want to demonstrate how easily you could set this up to read and write to a text file. So let's go back to here's this. Um, let's get rid of that text file because I believe that is uh, what we're reading and writing to. Yeah, images.txt. So I'm going to save this, relaunch it. Now I'm going to hit my hotkey. And now what's going to happen is it's going to generate that text file. And then after it writes it, it's going to read from it. It's going to read the content and we're going to see it in the output window again. So theoretically, this output should be the same. So I'm going to hit my hotkey. Here's my images.txt. And here we see that output, which is what we had seen before. Uh, now let's go into here and open this file up. Oh, other screen, of course. And notice there's one file. And notice it says Xmas equals, right? Because that's what we took. We got rid of the extension and, and the full path. It's just Xmas equals. And then this is the base64. Now notice how wide this is, right? It's super wide in the site. I could, uh, I think, turn off the options to, uh, let's wrap it. And now we can see it kind of looks more like it does in the other window, right? Uh, but this is the way that we could easily store this to a text file. Uh, unfortunately, with AutoHotKey, if I dumped this into an AutoHotKey script, because this one actually I think might be okay, but things over 16,000 characters can't handle it because uh, it, you need a continuation section. So for that, I have a different solution. Uh, and let's go ahead and jump into that one. But hopefully you get this idea of... Let me go back to Studio. Here we are calling the function. So this calls the function with Xmas not gif as the parameter we're passing, right? So if I had a different image in that folder, I could just change this and it would rip off the extension and then it would store it in the txt images.txt file as the this front part name. Um, so that would be the name of it. And then I go and read it. And so this would again allow you to have images that you're using in your script, but not actually have them stored as files, which I think is, is really cool. Now in this example here, we'd be having them as a text file. Uh, so maybe you don't want to do that. And that's where the other example I'll show you here in a second, where we could actually save it as a variable and it, it'll break it if it goes over 16,000 characters, because if, uh, if this one goes over 16,000 characters, uh, it wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be able to write it straight to an auto hotkey script. All right, so now we're going to open this convert image to base64 text break into sections. All right, so I'm just going to drag this in the studio. And here we're working with this same file. So this is still the same path. And we're going to pass it to the base64 encoding function. Uh, now here in this example, uh, that, sorry, that's still the same one that we used in the, in the other example, right? Uh, but then I take the results of that, which here is this long text. And we're going to pass that to break for storage as var, right? This is what I wrote. Um, the default is 16,000. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, this is where I'm calling the function. Down here is where I have the default set of 16,000. Uh, the, the variable name, the default name will be image because we got to give it something to store it as. Uh, and then here is just nothing as far as uh, that's the text you're going to be passing to it, right? The, the base 64 value. So... Uh, starting from here, we read it back into here. We get the base64 text, right? So sorry, this is the file path. Pass that to the base64 function. This is going to store this value here. Then we take this and we're going to pass it. And we need this my image. And it'll be easier to show you by example, right, of what it's doing. So if we start off with 16,000, I run this. Now notice there's no line breaks in here, right? So there's just the one my image. Now let's first off, let's start here. Let's say, let's call this I save and we launch it and notice it's just I colon equals that, right? So at the end of this, we would have a, we can copy this. And I think actually in my function, let's take a look and we scroll down here. Yeah. At the clipboard, the end of this, I dump into the clipboard that value, which you could then paste into your script. Uh, so it would have that as a, a way to, to 
already on your clipboard to paste into your script. Uh, but let's say um, this will be, let's say Xmas. That's fine. So here, oh, got to run it. Xmas equals that. Now, what if, for some reason, let's say we didn't want to have a really, really wide script. We wanted to paste something in the form. Let's say we wanted it like at 160 characters instead of 60,000, right? So let me relaunch this and run it. Now notice here in our output, and let me see if I can scroll out some here. It, uh, notice there's a bunch of these, and these are going to you know, be like a continuation section. So when you dump this into your auto hotkey script, it's going to, uh, you know, append to each one and, and build up over time. So uh, let's make it more like a 100, maybe. There we go. That's just a lot easier to read, right? So you, now I think you can easily see how at the end of this, if we were to copy this and we're going to paste it right here, all right? We'll go paste and then do a message box of Xmas. And let run it now this time this is where i'm running it just up here right so it it takes all of that and shoves it into one thing which was the original uh base 64 encoded string value right so this is a nice convenient way that you can easily break it down uh let's get rid of this so we don't mess up our script so we can break it down to depending on how many characters you want to break on and it just you know parses it for you breaks it up, and then you can dump it into your script. And again, this is a nice way where you can store this inside your auto hotkey files. Now, that's why I also made this as a variable, because you might do this several times and have different images, you know, stored in your auto hotkey script. And this makes it simple, because otherwise you would have, uh, let me relaunch it and run it. We would have to replace the Xmas here on every one of these 15 times. Right, so that's why do, putting this here makes that a little simpler. Now, in the next part of this video, we're going to finish this up with two approaches how to display a base 64 uh, encoded text as a picture, which I think is, is really cool. So let, let's jump into that. Okay, now for this last part, we're going to bring in this file show image without saving. So this is, I think, is, is pretty cool. I got this first one from Swagfag. He posted it on the forum. I'm not making that name up. Anyway, sorry, it just cracks me up. And uh, you can see here we have the image. This is the that same RO1. We still have it below here from the Xmas one, right? RO1, blah, blah, blah. It looks like almost RO1 God. And then to the far right here, it ends in that uh, QQAOW equals. QQAOW equals, right? So we're going to first demonstrate on this one now. This is where I was reading from the image file, uh, and let's see, I don't know if I have images, text, shapes. Oh, I had a different one here in this example, but we'll, we'll, we'll play with this in a second. Now, this does require the GDI library, um, and I think, uh, I think that's the short code for it. Uh, I'll just make sure the GDI P for GDI plus is where you can get the GDI library and you'll download that. Make sure you put it, I, I would put it in your library because it's a, it's a great library to have access to. And we're going to first initialize the GDI P library by this startup. And then we're going to use these two functions. Now, actually I had borrowed this from somewhere, but I could, now that I remember here in his, in Swagfag's thing, these were in two separate calls. I think I, I realized, hey, why have this on two lines? I'll just shove it all into one command. And this creates this HBM. I'm not sure if that's an H bitmap. Oh, well, here it says H bitmap. So I'll guess that's what it is. Uh, and it's going to display the picture. So let me save this and run it. And there's the picture, right? Now, what's really cool about this, you got to think about this, right? That picture is not stored somewhere. I mean, you know it is. Right now, though, it's, it's pulling it from here. Or let's say... Let me go back and get, I had this here. This is that, if we had this, let's say if it was too wide, instead of that one, I'm going to say Xmas. So this is just taking it here. This is where if it was over 16,000 characters, right? And uh, this, we'll just change this to be Xmas. And reload and run, and there it is. So hopefully you get that idea how cool that is. So you could have this stored inside your active script and show pictures, which I think is pretty cool. Now that's the first 
uh, first way that we can display images without saving them as files. It requires a GDI library, which is not a big deal. Let me get rid of all of that just because it, it took up a lot, of, a lot of space. There we go. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to comment all this out, and we're going to scroll down a bit. Here's the second approach. Now Maestrieth taught me this. Uh, this fix IE, um, I have a download for that. Let me let me take a look at what that one is. Okay, so the, the you can get the fix IE function here at the automator.com slash fix IE. I'm, I'm very original in my naming conventions. Uh, and basically, this is if you're getting errors, you know, you can apply this. Now, I've commented this out and it works fine. However, Maestruth was saying, you know what, it's better to have it in there. And notice here also, where we first store this into a variable called VER. And after we activate it, we restore fix IE, we restore it back to its original version, right? So if you're not using this line, you don't need this line. But if you are using this line, then make sure you have this line because uh, otherwise it would change it and not revert back because the ActiveX by default is like version seven. And so things can break because, you know, version seven of IE was, wow, pretty, pretty low. <laughs> um, and what's really cool about this is that you're using your browser to decode that base 64 encoding which I think is just also really cool because it takes the, the work out of AutoHotKey and just lets the browser do it for you. And so uh, what you do here is we're, we're saying, let's say, uh, add an ActiveX window. And here um, I'm passing it the VWB, which later I think, yeah, this is where the WB comes from, right? This VWB, you know what, let me uppercase these two to help, help it tie it together. That's these WB here, right? And if we didn't have that, it would... Uh, you, if you're new to GUIs, and I don't even work with GUIs a lot, but it would be very, this this whole thing, the V, it says stored as a variable for later use. So you, tip, you when you go to use it, you drop the V. So I know that's weird, but you do. Um, anyway, and we're controlling the size and width and the fix. Then we navigate to basically create a new window so we can pop it open. Now, I also commented this out for fun. Uh, we'll demonstrate all this stuff here in a second. Now, here's where the magic sauce is, right? We're going to, you need this tag, this whole HTML tag, JPEG, blah, and image. That's the variable. Uh, that's what we're going to be displaying, which actually we do need to re-enable that. So I'm going to save that. That's what's getting used here. And, you know, here I said the width of 20. Um, this you can adjust. This is H the... Here through here, you can see it's HTML, right? And then the GUI is going to show it. So let me save this and run it. I have my hotkey, and here it is, right? So that's displaying it. Now, let's say we wanted a width of, let's say, 50. Reload, run. Notice now it got bigger, right? Uh, not a shocker. Uh, and I think if you just set one, it'll do both. But if you, you could set height and width, and then you could make it kind of squishy but if you just set one it'll automatically adjust the other if you don't mention the other one and uh let's see what else we did now as i mentioned i'm going to comment out that and that and save and reload and run so see that on my computer right now that still worked fine and then also i'm going to comment out these two so i'm going to comment out that and that so save reload run and it still displayed it now that one, and, and I got to think, make sure it knows the stuff, that's there for a good reason. But every time I tested it, it, it came up just fine. So uh, I don't know if you have to always, you know, wait for it to be displayed before you populate it. Uh, maybe it happens. So maybe I have a, I do have a very fast computer with a M2 drive. Uh, so it's it's a very fast drive and it's stored in RAM and you know everything. So maybe that's why it works without those. But uh, I just want to demonstrate these are two ways you can display the content without uh, saving it as a file. And so you could have this base64 encoding and either use the GDI library or the uh, IE ActiveX window GUI and it'll render for you. So I, I think that's pretty awesome. Hope you enjoyed that. And let me know if you have any questions on this stuff. It, a lot of this is kind of outside my wheelhouse, but, you know, I played with it enough to have a decent idea now. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and let me know if you have a different approach. Hope it helps. Cheers.